How is everyone doing after the movie last night? Did you have any good dreams to report? <laughs> it might stir a few things up. Abstraction always has a way of doing that. <laughs> What? It was dead to the world. What's dead to the world? Yeah, I'm asleep. I was dead to the world. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's good. It stood me up, David. In a good way. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had I, this morning, um, just in meditation, just just having these mystical experiences of just the present moment. And what I notice is that the ego wants to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're having a mystical experience. You're going, no, you're not even. <laughs> it tried to join you. <laughs> and then, and then um, it started crying because it couldn't be part of it. <laughs> and, then, and then laughter started coming up. I thought, oh, hang on, who's laughing here now? And I realized it's the spirits laughing. And there was this mixture of laughter and crying and laughter and crying. And the more I sunk into it, the more I laughed and cried. And I went, okay, who's laughing and who's crying? Here? And I realized the ego was going, oh yeah, that means, oh, you're having a mystical. And it's like, no, you're not having a mystical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just so amusing to me. And then I just, I got up and just started walking down the canyon down the road. And it's like, Everything is just so, oh, there you go again. Oh, yeah, man, these clips are really good, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I, and I saw, that, you know, this, just that words can't enter into, into, the, into the present moment. You know, word. It's like it's this long, and, I, and, I, and it's like, yeah, I can just see how, how there is, there is the commentary is, is the denial of the holy instant. And it was just, and uh, I was so busy in, in that experience, and just uh, I forgot all about the PA set up. <laughs> Back into the world for a moment. But, oh wow, yeah. And it was just so triggered by last night's movie and, and your talk. It's just so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You yeah. have a witness. It, it can't be both ways. <laughs> it can't be eternal and time bound, you know. So, <laughs> some of our, I, that's, I even enjoyed watching that, you know, where it's, you know, the yes, yes, no, no, no. <laughs> it ain't going to happen that time wins or time has an existence. So. Yeah, or, or a commentary about it. Yeah. It's, it's out of the game altogether. Yeah. Because yeah. that movie really was about a lot of ego commentary. And then a lot of blank looks from the light. <laughs> it would it would kind of listen to the whole commentary and then uh, <laughs> boss <laughs> death. You know, it just didn't matter what it was. You know, it was like uh, I love that. That's just pure innocence, pure innocence. And two, that's the great thing about everything we do here is that if you're in a mystical experience and the sound system doesn't come on. Well, then that's the way it goes, you know, it's, there's not a push to finish something, get something done, have an outcome. It's just about joy and being present. And isn't that great that we can give ourselves permission for that? Because a lot of times people have, have, I had a friend one time who, she was having, she went into a mystical experience when she was driving her car down the highway at about 65, 70 miles an hour. And, um, you know, I th I'm sure a lot of you have pondered, like, what would happen if I was on the highway, on an interstate highway, I think she was on I-25 or whatever, coming up past the Garden of the Gods, down, uh, you know, south of, uh, near Colorado Springs, and, and she went into a full-blown mystical experience while she was behind the wheel, and I said, well, how did it go? And she said, I came out of it um, about... 20, 25 miles down the highway, and the car continued on, the body continued driving, and she just looked around almost like, you know, but it was, that was a beautiful little parable, a symbol of how everything is taken care of. The ego's fear is, oh, you go into one of those mystical experiences, you're going to let people down, things are going to go crazy, your life, your world's going to fall apart. You know, it's kind of the direction where it's heading. 
Anyway, but the ego makes that as a bad thing. Like, don't get too mystical there. Don't be too far gone because you may let somebody down. And, and that was a beautiful symbol to me of how the, everything is taken care of. This is a soft retranslation of the world, but there's no ripping away. We're not going to be hurled into eternity. You know, it's we're going to awaken gently retranslated. So, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you again, Greg, for sharing that. Who <coughs> else have any experiences? But I could see how my mind is creating circumstances for the healing. And it, it didn't seem that way when I was in my fear and anguish and rage and anger. And yet, through expression sessions with people that are holding the space, it just telling it all the darkest, deepest, your most fearful thoughts of everything, shame and anger and all of it. And once it comes out, you see that it's nothing. <laughs> it's really nothing. And 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 then miracles just start speeding up. Reflections of innocent and innocence and joy and love and purity and um, and an awareness that that's all I am. And then last night's movie was just like, yeah, it's like, and it's just, it's just, <coughs> it's just so perfect. But it's getting, getting this stuff out, blocks, like, that is what I found worked for me, was healing, was just being able to express every little thought that you think is a secret, mm -hmm. and it's not. It's just people wanting to hang on to it, and it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was a beautiful experience that I'm kind of still feeling. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, it just is there, and then it's not there. So. Thank you for sharing that. I know you've had that with. Boris and Grace and your sisters, and then when you come and you get it even more in a fuller way, it's like, oh yes, it's, this is it. It's the simplicity of it starts to come in really stronger. And the trust. Yeah, the trust level goes higher and higher, and then the ego's yeah. really got no hope. <laughs> and then the reflections are just everywhere in every person, just in all the <laughs> yeah. Yes, Charles, you had your hand up. Can we pass the mic back to? It's active now. You just switch it on right here. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Charles. The one of sound has has spoken, has expressed. Uh, Here's the mic. It's coming. I'm in this place where it's like love's all around me. It's like it's expressing. It's just, it's there. And there's this part of me that is just like, well, one part of me is like yes to that. Another part of me, it's like the worst thing in the world. Like, I can't even take it. Like, 
it's like there's a little window that opens up like in people's eyes like to the divine kind of like it's a clear channel and it's like when i see that it's just like a part of me is just like no mm. you know like like unworthy or something or a discomfort and i just can't seem to do it and then if i try to like kind of like force myself it's it, this little invisible wall comes up and it's like the color drains out of everything the feeling's not there any words about that experience that might be helpful? Yeah. The, only, the unworthiness is at the core of, of everything in terms of blocks. So when you start to get in touch with it, you know you're getting close to the end of the ego because it's it has to come up into awareness. And it reminds me of the teaching that everything is either love or a call for love. And when you're feeling the love, you know, you can feel it start to swirl and expand. It, it's, everyone knows that expansive feeling. It's just, ah, it's, it's beyond the words. And then now the focus becomes on starting to see that, that anything that's not that feeling is, is a call for love. Whether you perceive it in yourself, which is what it sounds like you're experience it. And it's what Greg was just talking about when he was aware of the commentary, you know, or you perceive it in s seemingly somebody else, it's starting to see that, that, that the way out of, of the ego, the way past the ego is to, is to really open to the calls for love. Because the ego wants to throw in a third interpretation, which is just attack. And that interpretation, if we bite on that interpretation, then you could feel the closing down that occurs. If attack were real, if, if attack were real in any way, shape, or form, then you could see where guilt would naturally follow, and closing down and contraction would be a reality. So the practice becomes in, in opening up and really tuning in with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit only recognizes those two orders of thought. Everything's love or a call for love. And when we answer the call for love, it just pours right through us, and then the darkness vanishes, the darkness disappears. And so that's what we're really practicing, is learning to just be with the Holy Spirit, be with that presence, stay with that presence, yield into that presence, and then when something arises, joining with the Holy Spirit and then feeling the love pour through us, thereby strengthening it in us, teaching what we would learn. So that's really what the lesson is. And the temptation of the ego is always to draw a conclusion or, or make a self-judgment. You know, to say, I'm this or I'm that, or I'm not going to get this, or look how closed I feel, or I'm losing the joy or whatever. That's what the ego wants, is to have a conclusion there. It kind of seems like sometimes in the moment of choosing love, I'm also, it's like, I'm, at the same time, it feels like I'm choosing, like, all this unconscious material that's going to, like, come out, and it's like, that's just the worst thing ever. But I know I want it, but it's like, it just, when I'm in the moment making, it seems like the choice has to be made every moment, and when I get to that opportunity, it's like, it's hard to, like, make the choice for it. Yeah, I think, you know, you're just coming in contact with this, unworthiness, which is really what the fear of love is about. The ego is terrified of divinity, of love. It feels like love is obliteration. And so, the Holy Spirit to the ego is the enemy. Love is the great enemy. And, and it is very much like that. It's like a choice point. Like, in the parable of David back around 1980, the late 1980s, when I first started going to course groups, the Spirit just started coming, pouring through so fast, my heart started opening, and the ego started freaking. It was like, uh-oh. Almost like it was put on the brake, it was like, reverse! Don't go to that course meeting, you know, another one! And I started to go like five groups a week, oh, it was like, it was backpedaling, you know, it was, oh, no, no. Because it was, there was so much heart opening, so much transparency, so much openness. 
during the meetings. Then I'd get in the car to drive home, and the ego would be judging, why'd you say that? Why'd you do that? You could have done this. You could, you know, it was always, it was trying to shut, shut the valve off as quick as it could, and it didn't want me to, you know, to go in that direction. But it started, it felt so good to finally feel the heart open up. That I, I'm like, oh no, I'm going, I don't know where this is headed, but I'm, I'm going in that direction. Yeah. either love or a call for love. Sometimes I gotta have like mantras, mantras to keep like a, 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 a something in my head like for long enough until I can, I don't have to think about it or reach for it, I can just, there it is. <laughs> 